Hi there, Simon here. So one of the questions I see a lot is, what exactly does BitTensor do? So this is a really quick, fast-paced video showing you what five of the BitTensor subnets are doing. Um, and I'm going to talk about what exactly they do in layman's terms, uh, what centralized competitors that they may have and that they're muscling in on, and also why that centralized competitor or competitors should be rather worried. But before we crack on with that, uh, I just wanted to share that this video is supported by Bitcast. Uh, Bitcast is the decentralized creator's economy. Uh, it's actually a bit tensor subnet, so it's subnet 93. Uh, so it's built on and powered by BitTensor. And um, effectively what happens is companies uh, pay Bitcast for videos. Those requests go to the miners. In this case, the miners are video content creators. Uh, and, and they make videos about the brief, whatever the advertiser wanted, uh, and then the miners get rewarded. And it's a brand new subnet, and so far in literally a matter of two months, I believe, um, it's, it's racked up quite a few numbers, and it's already making revenue, so far north of uh, 50 tau worth of, uh, of sales. So, right, without further ado, let's talk about BitTensor and the subnets. So, the easiest way to sort of pigeonhole what BitTensor is, is understanding Alphabet. So Alphabet is the, is the big company that holds Google. That is, that is the, the, the big holding company. And in Google, basically it's a massive umbrella uh, with lots of sub companies underneath it. And uh, some of you may have heard of them, some, of, you know, some that you won't have heard of. The big ones would be like YouTube, uh, Google DeepMind, there's Google Cloud, Google Keep, Google Drive. Uh, Alphabet has hundreds of mini companies or sub companies and projects. And the ticker or the, the token for Google is Goog. That is the, 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 the token or the stock ticker. And this is the gross value capture for everything that Alphabet does. And you only need 10 to 20% of the sub companies or projects to do well. And that delivers tremendous value. And so Google, this Goog ticker is the gross value capture of everything that Google does. Well, BitTensor is exactly the same. BitTensor is this massive umbrella company and under it, it has sub companies, which are commonly known as subnets, so subnetworks. And each subnet is an independent, decentralized, distributed AI startup with typically two to 20 AI engineers or uh, machine learning experts, all focusing on a completely different niche. Uh, at the moment, there's 128 of them and the token of BitTensor is Tau. So just like Goog, this is the gross value capture of everything positive or negative that BitTensor produces or doesn't produce. Um, and so what we've seen right now is a Cambrian explosion. It's just like when the internet launched and we had all sorts of websites. Um, or when Ethereum launched its um, ERC20 platform and also all of a sudden dApps, decentralized apps appeared out of everywhere. Um, well, this is BitTensor. Every subnet is doing something completely different. So without further ado, what are the five subnets I'm going to talk about today? Um, some may think I'm just trying to pump my bag, so I'm only going to share two of the ones that I've put a considerable amount of money in, um, and then three which I haven't touched yet. So first one is subnet 11. This is Dippy AI. And this is a weird one because it's, it is it is powered by AI, but it's not one which progresses, um, I, I guess, AI infrastructure or capabilities. And it's basically an AI companion. Elon Musk with his Grok companion pretty much validated the entire space here. And unfortunately, this is something which helps or is is capitalizing on on a horrible growing trend, which is loneliness. 76% uh, of Gen Z uh, report that they are lonely. And there are all sorts of competitors in this space. The biggest one is character AI. So at one point they were 20% of Google's search volume uh, until Google bought them out for billions. Um, and this is exactly what Dippy AI is doing. Um, it's growing a lot faster than character AI was. It has way more characters. It's more customizable. You can chat with other fictional characters that other people have created. Um, and also they are 
pivoting, or well, not pivoting, they are progressing as we speak. They're moving into a multimodal uh, studio. So it won't be long before you can have live Zoom quality videos real real time with your with your character um, and from a standing start in 12 months it's it's amassed 8 million users it's making over $60,000 a month and rising and average user engagement per day is 90 minutes with some power users of 8 hours a day which is alarming um, so yeah foul AI is the other centralized competitor um, when they start moving into the multimodal space so why will DPA AI win the growth is just phenomenal. Uh, it has far cheaper compute than what Character AI or FAL um, will be paying to deliver their, their processes. And <clears throat> according to the users, it's a much better experience. So that's Subnet 11, Dippy AI. Uh, Subnet 51, uh, previously known as Celium, is now rebranded as Liam. Uh, what does it do? It's GPU rental. Uh, if you're a researcher or an engineering company or a university and you want to crunch some models, or some algorithms or whatnot, you can just rent uh, NVIDIA H100s, for example, uh, and pay by the hour. Uh, centralized competitors would be CoreWeave, RunPod, and Paperspace. Uh, CoreWeave is um, pretty well known. They just IPO'd on the NASDAQ, I believe, for $23 billion. Now, why will Liam beat all of these centralized competitors? Huge price undercuts. For example, if you were to rent out an NVIDIA H100 from CoreWeave, it's $4.76 an hour. Celium, they're undercutting it by almost 3x. It's $1.35. Uh, there's not a single centralized competitor that can compete um, with any of the, 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 the GPU rental prices. So that's going places. Next is Subnet62, Ridges AI. What does it do? Coding, coding assistant. So in a, I guess, uh, an average outcome, uh, Ridges will help uh, 10x or 100x the capability of existing coders, but if they fully execute where they where they where they're, they're aiming for, it could just make human coders completely redundant. Um, so there's a huge market here. Centralized competitors would be Claude Code, Cursor, and Devon. Uh, Claude Code seems to be the best at the moment, and um, Ridges is is quickly uh, catching up. Again, they they are literally months old. And why will it win? Again, cheaper, more effective, it's rapidly catching up. So there, there is a SWE benchmark, a bunch of different um, uh, tasks. And at the moment, Claude Code, when presented with these benchmarks, achieves a 74% um, efficiency or accuracy. Well, Ridges is just spooling up and this is their progress so far. So they started in <laughs> the 13th of July and as you can see on this chart, it shows it's in sort of the 40-ish percent. Um, as I make this video, they've they're breached 50%. So it's rapidly catching up. Um, and the moment it gets to uh, Claude Code's level or, or beyond, um, Anthropic, and they, they just won't be able to catch up. Again, open source, distributed, decentralized AI, grows faster, it's much cheaper. We then have Subnet 75, Hippius. What does it do? Cloud storage, um, but decentralized cloud storage. Like with all BitTensor subnets, everything is decentralized or decentralizing and also distributed. The competitors are the big, well, big boys, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Dropbox. And again, like with a lot of these subnets, they're better, faster, cheaper. Um, and arguably, I'd say more private. Um, I, I, you know, they, they use a sort of a bit torrent type um, sort of system to, to do decentralized cloud storage where everyone has little bits of it. So no, no one has your naked pictures on their hard drive <laughs> if they're uh, um, contributing hard drive space to the network. Everything is all um, separated. And so but and it's, it's vastly cheaper. So if you, you you can go to their website, play around with their pricing calculator and you can see Pretty much in any scenario you, you sort of conjure up, it's about 10x cheaper than Google or Amazon. So very impressive. And then we have Subnet 85. What does it do? Decentralized AI, video upscaling and compression. Again, much cheaper, uh, uh, faster and, and more efficient. Um, it has all sorts of, I mean, this is a, a pretty crowded space. There's lots of people that do this, but again, they don't come close. 
Um, and also video has now made a partnership with Hippias. So for me, I, you know, I think a really good situation would be when Netflix comes along and goes, wait a minute, we have to compress a lot of videos and we have to store a shit ton of videos. Why don't we just use video, uh, video to compress them and then use Hippias to store it all 10 times cheaper? Um, so yeah, they're the five subnets, which, uh, I mean, there are many, I, I could talk about 30, 30 subnets that are going to potentially change the world, but we'll start with five for now. Um, and also if you are interested and, and genuinely, uh, open-minded and curious about what subnets are doing, um, go to subnetalpha.ai. Uh, so if I simply, if I just X out of this and open up subnet alpha oopsie daisy i can't spell for ai um, this is simply a directory of every subnet um, you know e each one of these is an individual company so they're all doing things and they all have their individual roadmap so it um, it is hard to maintain this is one of my websites i have a, a human in an office updating this constantly but if you're interested let's say you wanted to learn about apex you, you can click on it it explains what exactly it, it does, all the links, social media and websites and stuff. Uh, and you can learn and do, you know, get a nice deep dive uh, under the bonnet and see what exactly it does, who the team are. You can click to see their, their LinkedIn profiles if they have one. Um, and then other interviews on any podcast that they may have done. So yeah, check it out, Subnet Alpha. Um, what is BitTensor? There's a whole bunch of videos you can learn about BitTensor here um, and a whole bunch of other resources. So I hope this finds you well. And uh, there is a, again, going back to BitCast, who is supporting this video, video there is um, a BitCast link somewhere in the description in this video. So hope this finds you well. Cheerio, folks.